Hello, my name is Jason Drew, and today I'm going to take you through a demo, kind of a hands-on how-to uh, demo on how to create a RAG-based chatbot with Databricks. Now, I will include a link to the code that I use, and I'm going to also try to highlight the little snippets that you would need to change in order to make this work for your particular use case. So in this example, um, for the majority of this uh, demo, I'm going to be using um, PDF files and, and kind of making an appliance uh, uh, chatbot. So something that will answer kind of how to and troubleshooting questions on appliances. Now, of course, you can use this for anything that you want. Um, for uh, PDFs, I utilize UC volumes. If you were to use this for uh, data that you had in, in more structured formats like CSV, you could use external locations. And I will show you examples of both. But the way that this demo, the majority of this demo is going to go, is that we're going to be placing document PDFs within a UC volume. And once we do that, then we need to basically extract the text from that document and uh, put it into chunks and, and load it into a table. From there, we're going to create a vector search endpoint, and in conjunction with um, an embedding model that is included with Databricks, in this particular example, we're going to be using the Databricks BGE large EN embedding model, we will create a vector index. Now, if you're familiar with RAG or retrieval augmented generation, basically this is the the data that you have specific for your organization that the um, uh, vector index is going to be able to look up through the RAG application and provide content uh, specific to that um, with a large language model like DBRX, which we'll be using for the chatbot side of this. So there's two different models on this. There's an embedding model and then the LLM used for the chat interface. Once we've got that put together, we're going to create something called a RAG retriever, which goes into a RAG lane chain, which basically combines the prompt template or the instructions and how you want this LLM to, to basically kind of behave. Um, and then also um, the, the DBRX instruct model. So that's the one that gives it kind of the front end um, natural language query capabilities. Once we've got that assembled, we'll go ahead and register that as a model to UC. And then we're going to create a model serving endpoint so that we can interact with this model in real time. So users will be able to query that in, in real time. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go through a little uh, bit of an example on how to operationalize this. In other words, as we get more data or more um, uh, documents in this case, how do we go ahead and keep our model and our vector index up to date so that our uh, chatbot can continue to answer the questions in, uh, you know, to the best of its ability? So let's start off with the first step. We're going to place some documents into a UC volume. So here I am within uh, Unity Catalog Explorer, and in, I'm in a particular catalog and schema that I've created called LLM and RAG. You, of course, can create this with any name that you want. Um, but when you have the volume and we're gonna be referring to the volume's location, this is how you find the, the location. It'll be actually what I have highlighted in the bottom there for the, uh, the volume's location. So I'm gonna go ahead and upload a washer manual PDF to this particular volume. And now that I have it in my volume, I need to be able to extract that and put that into, you know, a docs text, at least that's what I'm calling the table, um, preparing that data so that we can do the vector index on it. So I've, I will provide a link that has all of these different notebooks for you to utilize. And the first one that we're uh, going to run is the create needed tables notebook. So it's pretty simple here. I'm creating two tables, one that I'm calling docs text and one that I'm calling docs track. And in both of these, I've enabled change data feed so I can keep track of row level changes. And in my docs text table, I am auto generating the primary key, which is going to be used as our index. And we'll see that in action here in a little bit. And then of course, name this whatever is appropriate for you. So in, in this these two cases, you'll probably need to put different three-level namespaces and table names depending upon what you want to name them. So when we go ahead and we run this, if I go to catalog, you'll see that it's created those two tables for us. Now they're blank, but we'll fill them up with stuff here very, very shortly. Now the next step is uh, we're going to run 2A, which is incremental PDF to docs text. So in this notebook, first of all, we need to install some required you know, dependencies. So I'm using PDF uh, Plumber and Langchain. 
Um, then what I'm doing is I'm basically creating a data frame that will list all of the files that I have in that particular volume. And this is so that we can keep track of what we've already processed and we don't have duplicate processing of that. So as you can see, it's just showing right now washer uh, manual PDF because that's all that we have in there currently. Then what we want to do is run this cell three where we're going to check for files not yet processed. So that's at that beginning where we're doing a select distinct uh, of the file name from the docs track table. Well, the docs track table was just created. It has nothing in it. So of course, it's there's nothing that's going to uh, uh, filter out at this point, but it would the next subsequent time that we run this. Then what it's going to do is it's basically going to um, chunk this out um, and we see the splitter and the chunk kind of settings down at the bottom. And then we're gonna utilize the pandas uh, UDF which then we can reference when we are inserting um, our text into the docs tracks table. So what this is showing is that for that one PDF document and the settings of how we, you know, we want to chunk this, that it's made 295 rows of text information um, and you'll see 295 IDs or indexes on this. So and then the final thing we're doing here is basically now we're updating our docs track table. So the next time this runs, it won't reprocess that file. All right. And you want to, of course, make sure that that is pertinent um, and change to the names in the three level namespace that you're using. So if we go back to Catalog Explorer, now we can see our docs text table has all these different IDs with different chunks of, of text. And our docs tracks table has the washer manual PDF. Now, if I were to run this again without any kind of new files in there, it wouldn't process any more rows. And that's why we're doing it the way that I set it up. Now, I did want to include an alternate option here um, in case you maybe wanted to uh, scrape some data from a website, or maybe if you just had data that was in a, you know, a more structured or semi-structured format like a CSV file. So I found a website called Appify where I can do, um, it's kind of a freemium model where I could create a web content crawler. And in that, basically, I would put in whatever website it is that I wanted, and I'd go ahead and save and start that. And that will try to go through all the different you know, levels of the website. Some uh, websites have been more successful for me than others, but the neat thing is it's going to take all of that text. And then I have the ability to go ahead and export that as a CSV file. And if I do that, then I can utilize this 2B CSV to docs text. Uh, notebook that I've provided. It's going to be very similar. First of all, though, we don't need uh, PDF Plumber because we're not doing with PDF, but we do need Lang Chain. Um, in this case, I am basically chunking out data from the, the data frame, which I, in this case, can reference just a, an external location. It doesn't need to be a volume. Um, the splitter and the chunks and all that stuff is, is very similar. The pandas PDF is identical. And then I basically use that to load to the table. In this case, I didn't do it. I just wanted to show you what that would be like. Um, and then, of course, I'm not, you know, keeping track of a, of a docs, uh, you know, check uh, table um, because, you know, we're doing it a different way. But anyway, th th this was just basically to kind of show you another way that you could go about um, uh, loading that data um, for indexing. So now that we've got all of our data prepared, now we want to create a vector search endpoint. It's very easy to do. You basically go to compute vector search and say that you want to create a vector search endpoint. You give it a name, it'll take a second to spin up, and then it'll become available for you to use. Now, right now, it doesn't have any indexes, so it's not really doing anything, but that will change here very, very shortly. So now let's go ahead and create the vector index, which basically we need that vector search endpoint. We need an embedding model, which is the Databricks uh, uh, BGE large EN embedding model that comes with uh, Databricks. So back in Catalog Explorer, I'm going to go to my docs text table, and then I'm going to click this these three little um, dots in the upper right hand corner, and I'm going to say I want to create a vector search index. And so then it'll take you through this very intuitive GUI where we're basically saying, okay, what do we want to name this vector uh, index? In this case, I'm just going to call it docs IDX. What's the primary key? Well, there's only two columns in that table, right? There's ID and text, so it's it's pretty obviously ID. We're using the endpoint that we just created. We want to compute the embeddings, um, and we're going to compute those based upon the text column, utilizing the embedding model that we just spoke about, the BGE large EN. And we want this to be triggered. It could be continuous, but in this case, we want it to be triggered. 
So I'll go ahead and say create. It'll take a, a moment for it to do the initial sync. And once that's available, now we have basically done a vector index of all of the text information from the PDFs that we have in that volume. And we can even query this endpoint. So if I say something like detergent, what this is doing is it's giving similarity scores and retrieving information. This is not the chatbot interface or the natural language processing yet. This is basically just proving that if we uh, give it a word, it will be able to retrieve information from that vector index. So we still got some more work to do. But you can see it's giving a similarity score here based upon, you know, detergent. You can also see that it's answering questions sometimes in different languages, but we can we can solve for all of that when we do the prompt template here shortly. So now we need to give this application a way to retrieve that information. And to do that, we create what's called a RAG retriever. So I've got that in this third notebook called RAG Chatbot. So again, we're going to install some necessary dependencies at top. And then we're going to set some needed parameters. So first of all, I want to call attention to the scope and the key. So you need to create a personal access token for this to work. And then if you don't want to expose that personal access token, you really need to have a secret scope and, 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 and secret setup. Now, if you don't know how to do this, I will include a video, a short video in the description of this uh, to explain how to do that. But assuming that you do know how to do that, um, then you'll go ahead and uh, reference the index name and the vector search endpoint. And then you're going to build the retriever. And the retriever, you need to use the same embedding model that you used for your, your embedding or your vector uh, index. Um, and then we're going to put all this together into a rag lane chain. So we're going to take that where we're going to reference that retriever, a prompt template, and then we're going to tell it to use DBRX instruct for the chat bot. So here you can see in this cell, um, what's our chat model? What's that DBRX instruct that we just talked about? What's the template? So what are the basically kind of parameters that you want it to, to work under? So I'm basically telling it that you are an assistant for home appliance users and really only answer questions that are relevant to that, that you have information on. Don't make things up, make it as concise as possible, answer only in English. Um, and then you could even test that within this notebook. And then finally, what we need to do is we need to register this as a UC model. So this is the code in this cell six that does that. And basically the, what you would wanna change is you know, the model name. And of course the dots are going to you know, indicate where this is going to get registered to in the three level namespace, um, what you wanna call the run name, et cetera. And once you run this, then within Catalog Explorer under that catalog, you will see the model being registered. So now we have the model but we want to be able to basically serve it up real time. And in order to do that, we need to create a model serving endpoint. So if we go to, to serving and we click create serving endpoint, um, then we basically want to tell it what model do we want to serve? Well, we want to serve the model that we just registered to UC. So the, um, in the LLM catalog, RAG and appliance uh, chatbot, in my case, yours will probably be different. And then we want to give it a, a compute scale out option. Well, this is just an example, so I'm going to use the smallest one. And then we do need to include the Databricks token. So in this case, this is the format and the demo is the scope and the Azure 3 token is my token. And again, I will give instructions on how to set this up uh, in a link in the description of this video. So once we do that, we'll go ahead and have it spin it up. It'll take a little bit of time. And once it's up and ready to take requests, now we can actually query that endpoint directly. So I could ask it something like, what does a SUDS message mean? And it's gonna give me a pretty good response. But if I ask it something like, what's the meaning of life? Well, that's not even an appropriate question for it. And our template told them not to even try to answer those to politely decline. And sure enough, we can see that it's reminding the user that, that it's a, a home appliance, uh, uh, you know, chatbot for those types of questions. And they can't really answer philosophical life questions like that. Okay, so let's ask it an appropriate question, but one that we know it does not yet have data for, like what do I do if my gas range burner won't light? Well, we only have information on a washer machine, so it doesn't have this, but it's saying that you should look at the, you know, documentation for that. Well, let's go ahead and update it so that it can answer that question for us. So that's where we kind of go into a little bit of the operationalization of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a job here and I'm going to have it have one task. That task is to run this incremental PDF to docs text notebook that we've been working on. 
I'm going to create that as a task, but then I'm going to add a trigger to this. And this trigger is going to be a file arrival trigger so that anytime, uh, you know, a new PDF doc happens to land in this volume, then I want to go ahead and kick off this, this workflow, if you will. So right now, nothing's running because we have no new files. But if we go to the catalog and we upload to that volume now a gas range manual, then we can see that it's kicking off a new job and it's processing. And once it's done, our docs text table is up to date. And then the second part that we need to do is basically synchronize, um, resynchronize the uh, vector search endpoint. So if this was running continuously, it would have just done this for us, but we have this triggered. We could sync it now by clicking that sync now button. Um, but instead, let's go ahead and click this link that takes it to the pipeline. So basically in the background, what this is doing is it's creating a DLT pipeline. And we could schedule this so that maybe every night at midnight, as we're collecting more and more of these files, it'll resync this. So the next day it can answer all the questions on the new files. Um, in this case, I just went ahead and uh, manually kicked it off so that we can see what the output is. And now if I go back to the model serving endpoint and query that again and ask the same question that I asked just uh, a few moments earlier, what do I do if my gas range burner won't light? Well, now it's giving me a very, um, you know, appropriate and accurate answer to that because it has access to that information in the vector index. So that's how we kind of create that chat bot. But in, re in real life, you'll probably want a GUI front end on this and have, you know, some sort of third party tool call it. And so, uh, you know, a, a good example of, of how this might work is in this final notebook called Chatbot GUI. So in this one, I'm using Gradio, which is a, you know, a free kind of uh, front end, and I'm installing some dependencies like DB Tunnel and uh, AIO HTTP, and of course, restarting the session so it takes those into effect. Then, in order for a third-party application to call a model serving endpoint, it basically needs two things. It needs to understand, it needs to have access to the token. So in this case, I'm grabbing it from a secret scope and, and the, 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 the token, um, Azure 3 token. So yours would be different. Um, and then I need to reference the model serving invocation endpoint URL. Now, if you don't know where to get this URL, if you just go to the model serving endpoint, it's up there right at the top and you can copy and paste that. Um, also, this is set uh, to work with the model and the, um, the structure that I put together. But if for whatever reason, you know, your payload was different, you need to keep in mind, um, you know, the format uh, that is being passed to whatever front end application. So if your payload's different, you might need to uh, work on uh, structuring that payload a little bit differently. Down here, final things that I made is I changed the title, the description, and an example. And then I went ahead and ran this. And what this does in this particular case is giving me a URL. I click on that URL. Now I'm in the appliance chatbot demo from Gradio. I ask it a question like, how long should I preheat my griddle for pancakes? And it gives me an answer because it has that information from the vector index. So I hope you found this useful. Um, and I encourage you to go ahead and give it a try. I think you'd be surprised about how quickly you can get up and running with your own use cases. Um, so I thank you for your time and uh, have fun. Thank you.